Welcome to this overview of PXF Grain. So PXF Grain is meant to be a quick and dirty grain generator based on Nuke's grain node, but with a few uh, convenience features added on top of it. So if we bring in a Nuke's grain node, the built-in one here, and we connect it to our image, uh, we can, of course, add some grain that way. However, there's a few annoying things. So first, uh, all three uh, channels of intensity, irregularity, and size are not grouped. So if I want a lot more, uh, let's say, intensity, I have to do all three separately. So that's annoying. <laughs> the other thing that's uh, annoying, there's no mask input. So if I just want to limit the effect to some area, I can't. There's no way to desaturate uh, the grain. So if I want the grain to be less colorful on this black and white photo, for example, there's no built-in way to do this. And uh, the big one is I, don't, I cannot bias the grain to be more uh, aggressive in the shadows and less aggressive in the highlights or vice versa. So there's no way to adjust the amount of grain in the shadow, midtones, and highlight areas. So that's, uh, that's annoying. And lastly, last little thing, because apply only through alpha is turned on, if I disconnect the grain node, it starts to complain and give me an error because there's no alpha coming in. So a bunch of little annoying things that I wish Foundry would have taken care of, but they didn't. So let's bring in PXF grain instead. So here I have PXF grain. I'm gonna connect it to my image. So now we have uh, gang controls of uh, the size, irregularity, and intensity. So if I bring up one value, if gang is turned on, all three values will follow. So that's pretty uh, cool. And if I want to adjust them separately, I can just turn off gang and now I can adjust my red intensity and the other two are not moving. So this will behave the same way for irregularity and size. We also have a saturation control now. So if we make the grain real obvious for the video, like so. So we can now adjust the saturation of the grain to make it more or less colorful. So you can go all the way down to zero for a black and white photo. But now we can adjust how much saturation we want in our grain. There's also a new mask gamma uh, control. So if we have an alpha with some uh, transparent areas, let's just make some random shape here with some feathering. If we mask our image, we can control how much grain we want in the transparent area on the feather. So uh, to do that, we would go in the mask gamma value. And if we lower the mask gamma, we can adjust how much uh, g uh, grain we want on the transparent areas. So often we want to boost that. If we're mixing our own grain with real grain, uh, the two cancel each other out. So we want more grain on the transparent areas. We also have, of course, a mix knob. So we, we can adjust how we want to blend our grainy image with the original. And last but not least, we have a uh, bias control here where we can adjust how much grain we want in the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So let's go back to a little bit more sensible values here. Let's try to balance our grain. So right now we have the same amount of grain in the shadows, uh, midtones, and highlights. Uh, to adjust that, we've got a color lookup here where we need to adjust the red, green, and blue curves. Don't touch the master or the alpha curve and just use these three curves here. And you can do all three at once if you shift click and select all three at once and control A to select them all. And now we can adjust them together. So now I'm biasing the grain to have more grain in the shadows, less grain in the midtones, and no grains in the extreme highlights. If I make this very obvious, I can crunch my curve like that. And you can see that I have a lot of grain in the shadows, in the hair, and almost no grain in the bright areas in the skin. So that's a way to balance how much grain I want in the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights, which is not easily uh, possible with the grain tool uh, built into Nuke. If I want to make this fall off a little bit smoother, I can select the points here and push H on my keyboard to adjust the tangent here. So now I have a smoother roll off. You can, of course, 
do all three curves at once. So that's a way to do all the three curves together. Or you can adjust one curve at a time if you want the bias to be different for the red, green and blue channels. The rest of the controls are mimicking what's in the grain node. So you have a size control, so you can adjust how big you want the grain to be. So that's the size, of course. Uh, the intensity is how much the grain is multiplied with the image, so a lot or less. Irregularity will break up the grain pattern, so that's going to change your pattern. Uh, this is more subtle, but it might be useful if you're really trying to match some real life uh, grain. So there you go. That's a pretty uh, basic grain tool. Of course, it doesn't cover all cases, but sometimes you just need a quick and dirty synthetic grain. And now you can do it with a shadow mid-tone highlight bias, among other things. So that was our overview of PXF grain. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.